Do you use Epsom salts in the garden? Are you thinking about it? If so, I've got some information you need to hear. This is gonna be a controversial video, but I'm not here to just make you feel good about anything in the garden. I want to show you how to save money and grow things with minimal headaches. You're allowed to do whatever you wanna do after that, but I'm here to point out the things that work and the things that don't work. The biggest, most pervasive gardening myths in the whole world seem to revolve around one product. Epsom salts. I'm not saying Epsom salts are good for nothing, but according to the Epsom Salt Council, did you even know there was one of those? Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate helps seeds to germinate, makes plants grow bushier, produce more flowers, increase chlorophyll production, deters pests such as slugs and voles, and it also provides vital nutrients, they say, to supplement your regular fertilizer. Let me know down in the comments your honest opinion. Do you swear by Epsom salts? Do you never use Epsom salts? Are you curious? If you do use it, has it helped or hurt your gardening efforts? Before we separate myth from fact, what exactly is Epsom salts? Epsom salts are magnesium sulfate. So it's 10% magnesium and 13% sulfur. Plants do need them, but Usually in such small amounts, there are plenty of both of those nutrients in your soil already. The only place where that would really be, a, a, might be a problem would be commercial agriculture. But that's not describing our home gardens, especially organic gardens. Magnesium is needed by plants to make the chlorophyll they need for photosynthesis. If you have sandy soil, you might be a tad low on magnesium, but you would see that in your plants. On magnesium deficient plants, the lower leaves on the plant turn yellow and the, the, the veins stay green. So it's real easy to notice. And if that happens, you don't need Epsom salts. Just throw some uh, organic compost on there and water it in and that should fix the problem. And it has so many other things other than magnesium in it to really boost the microbes in the soil, the earthworms, everything is gonna be benefited by that versus just Epsom salts. The other ingredient is sulfur, and sulfur deficiencies are rare, um, but those will actually show themselves as the top leaves on the plant turning yellow, the new leaves. And then it'll work its way down the plant to the older leaves. And if you have a sulfur deficiency, you don't need to add sulfur, just some aged manure will do the trick. And again, it's got so many other things other than sulfur in it to really work with the soil and the entire biology in the soil. All right, so now that we know what Epsom salts is, let's get into the myths surrounding it. The biggest claim about Epsom salts is that it will either prevent or treat blossom end rot, which is that right there. If you get these on your tomatoes or your peppers, uh, it can be frustrating, but it is not a deficiency of magnesium or sulfur. It's actually a calcium deficiency. And there's no calcium in Epsom salt, so I'm not even sure how this got started. But it's not a lack of calcium in the soil. Generally, there's plenty of calcium in the soil. It's usually an underwatering or sporadic watering issue. Calcium needs water to move itself from the soil and into the plant tissues. To make matters worse, magnesium actually competes with calcium for uptake into the plant. So if you've got them both trying to get in and you're not watering perfectly, there's a problem. So don't add magnesium to a problem that could be caused by magnesium. So the cure for blossom end rot is practically free. Just water your plants better, more often, consistently. When you add Epsom salts to the soil, you have to water them in well, right? So is it the Epsom salts that treated the blossom end rot or is it the water that you put on there with the Epsom salts? The next claim is that Epsom salts can be used as a weed killer. Okay, let's think about that objectively. Epsom salts can kill weeds, but also make your plants thrive. Weeds are plants. So Epsom salts must be a miracle because it's the smartest thing in the world if it knows which plants are weeds that it should kill and which plants you want because it will make them thrive. I guess if you mix it too strong, it can scorch plants, which could make weeds look like they're dying, but it's never going to kill the weed. Another claim is that it can be used both as a pesticide and a spray to make your plants bushier. There is no evidence that I have found 
in a lot of research time to, to substantiate either one of these claims. In fact, the literature on magnesium sulfate kind of shows the opposite. It shows that magnesium deficient plants are actually less susceptible to pest damage than those with sufficient magnesium. Now, I suppose this could have come from the fact that you can use sulfur to fight certain pests in the garden, but there's not enough sulfur in Epsom salts to do that. You would have to use a highly concentrated mix and then it would for sure scorch your plants. So who cares about the pests anyway? And that leads to another uh, claim about Epsom salts is that it's natural. So you can use as much as you want and not worry about it. Try telling that to the people who use too much and scorch their plants, or try telling that to the poor weeds that get scorched. Back to the sulfur, a sulfur lime spray can help if you have things like mildew, rust, or blossom blight. A spray containing sulfur can help. It'll also help with scale or red spider mites. But again, there's not enough sulfur in magnesium sulfate to make a difference with that. How about the claim that it also promotes more fruit and foliage growth? Well, nitrogen promotes foliage growth and phosphorus and potassium promote fruits and flowers. Magnesium and sulfur have nothing to do with this. The fifth claim is that Epsom salts help seeds germinate faster. Seeds only need two things, sometimes three, to germinate, and that is moisture and oxygen, and sometimes cold. Magnesium sulfate will not help with time or success of germination. As with the blossom end rot um, and the water that is actually the thing preventing the blossom end rot, if you soak seeds in an Epsom salt water mixture, uh, some seeds do need to have their coat softened to speed them up, but it's not the Epsom salts doing it. It's just the soak in water. Number six, Epsom salts increase chlorophyll production. The only thing that increases chlorophyll production is the availability of light to the leaves of the plant. Magnesium provided at high levels doesn't do anything about that. The seventh myth is that the use of Epsom salts actually makes it where you don't have to use other fertilizers as much. I'm not sure where this came from because Epsom salts do not include nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium, or any of the other trace elements that plants need. It's just magnesium and sulfur. So no, it doesn't make it where you don't have to fertilize as much. All the claims made for Epsom salts kind of center around the theme that you can't use too much, it won't hurt you know, to use too much. The Epsom salt is not persistent, so it won't stay in the soil. Use it for everything. And people do, obviously. This is simply untrue. There are decades of research that show the uh, mismanagement, misuse, overuse of Epsom salts to be harmful to both plants and the soil. Excessive misuse or overuse of Epsom salt can create an imbalance of soil minerals leading to a lot of problems. Magnesium sulfate is a salt and excessive levels can cause salt injury to plants. Unnecessary applications of magnesium will not increase plant growth and might even make growth worse. Excessive use of magnesium sulfate can cause plant deficiencies of boron, iron, manganese, potassium, and calcium. Overuse of magnesium sulfate has been linked to reduced root colonization of beneficial microbes such as nitrogen-fixing bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi. That's important. Excessive amounts of soil magnesium can release aluminum from the soil, making this toxic metal available to plants and aquatic systems. And if we eat the plants, it's getting into us too. So with all of that, is it ever a good idea to use Epsom salts in the garden? Well, I used to use it in my container tomatoes because tomatoes need a lot of magnesium and I always wanted to make sure they had plenty in the soil in the pot. You never know if it flushes out, you never know you know, if it, the levels of it in the first place with the potting soil. But last year, I didn't use it and had no problems. If you have good potting soil, good compost in there, it really shouldn't be an issue, and I probably will no longer use it going forward. One way I found to use Epsom salts is if seedlings, especially tomatoes, uh, when they're still in their trays, turn purple. It's generally a lack of magnesium, and so a spritz over the top of magnesium sulfate with water uh, would help that. But you could also make compost tea and spray it over and probably have the same results. 
and that would be free if you make your own compost. So for me, Epsom salt in the garden is really not necessary. 95% of the claims out there are completely false and have no basis in reality. In fact, they can do your garden more harm than good. So save the Epsom salts to soak your feet in when you come in from a long day in the garden. If you learned something, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to click this video right here, you'll find out an ingredient in your medicine cabinet right now that will transform your tomato plants. I'll see you guys next time.